done all that, you know, let me just, you know, there's a way that people, you know, um, approach difficult times. Some people just quit trying. Just quit trying. And that's settling. Hallelujah. The most difficult set of people to work with is people who have settled. You can't move them. They are solid as a rock. Well, that's not the will of God for us. Glory be to God. I'm not saying don't settle as a lack of um, contentment where you see people who are never, they lack contentment. No, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking of uh, being complacent. Hallelujah. Being complacent. I'm not saying don't, be, don't, don't, don't uh, lack contentment because the lack of contentment will always lead to covetousness. So you're always pursuing and pursuing and pursuing. There's always, you're always in pursuit. Hallelujah. And like a man of God said, said, if you are always pursuing tomorrow, you will not know where you are today. You can't even enjoy where you are today. You can't embrace what you have today. You can't even notice that you were here today because while you were here, guess what you were doing? You were looking at tomorrow. You're always there. Hallelujah. You know, my wife, um, I think some two Thursdays back now, or which Thursdays now, you know, shared with us vision, having a vision. Glory be to God. And I said, to not have a vision, you know, it's like somebody who is blind or who is dead because he's not going anywhere. Hallelujah. That's the same way complacency is. That's the same way. When somebody is complacent, there is no vision again. He's made enough money, there's no drive again. There's no vision, there's no pursuit, there's no, you know, there's nothing to wake up to. The person settles. Hallelujah. But we know what the scripture tells us. If you think yesterday was bad, the Bible tells us. Say, God said, forget the former things. Glory be to God. He said, it, I've tried, it didn't work out. You know, everything always looks so somehow. He said, forget the former things of old. Find that in um, Isaiah 43. Read from 18. It says, Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Hallelujah. So remember not the former things, whether it was great success, because your success can easily lead to complacency. Yeah. Can settle. Oh. Everything is good enough. I like it the way it is now. Glory be to God. And so you settle for what you're good at and you don't challenge yourself for what you're not good at. You will say to you, you know, you, 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 you go to the, to the area of convenience. You don't want to try something new. When there's complacency, there's stagnation. There's no drive to want to move forward. Whether it's because you have lost strength or hope on trying to move forward, or this place that you are is just warm and comfortable enough. And so you are not given to trying something new. When somebody gets to a stage of complacency, the person does not try something new. It's just, okay, I'm okay like this. I am okay like this. And that's, God never wants us to be like that. Because when, you're, when you feel you're okay, you, what you don't realize is that you will begin to do what? Move backward. You know what makes people, you don't realize it. You can be here, standing in the same place, but over time, you will not realize how far you've fallen. Imagine if I'm standing here and I'm okay standing here and there were people that were right behind me, but they keep moving. Over time, do you know what will happen? While I'm here, they'll be there. I was once ahead, but now I'm what? Behind. And that's very easy in life. 
That's very easy in life. How does that happen? Complacency. Oh, yeah, I am. I am okay here. There's no longer any drive. They are very satisfied with what they have, where they are. So there is no push for more. There's no push for more. Early success can easily lead to complacency. Early success. See, when one did not learn to achieve through trial and failing and trying and failing and trying, it can easily become complacent in life. Early success. And those who were falling and trying and trying again and learned how to succeed will now keep moving forward. But that one is already locked in. Glory be to God. And that can be very, very dangerous because before you know what is happening, you are moving backward. Hallelujah. Without knowing. Paul said, I don't count myself to have achieve or attain. Let's read that scripture again in um, Philippians chapter 3. You know, I just read from verse 10 because this is what's led into what we're talking about. So that I may know him, the power of his resurrection, the fellowship of suffering, being made conformi conformable unto his death. It says, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Now he says, not as though I have already attained. This is Apostle Paul. If anyone could say that I've attained, I think he is qualified to be the one. Hallelujah. But at this point, say, not that I count myself to attain. Either we're already perfect. Say, but I follow after. If that I may apprehend that for which I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Say, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. But this one thing I do. This one thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind, I reach forth unto the things which are before. I press towards the mark of the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus. Forgetting those things which are behind, I press forward. I am constantly reaching. I don't count myself to be perfect. I don't see myself as when you talk about being perfect, the one that has, that's had it all. Say, but there's something that I do. I constantly keep pressing forward. You have to understand Paul's mindset. He's the one that said, you know, say, I beat my body and put it under subjection. Let's have him preach to others. Me, I become a castaway. Understand? That's Paul. Hallelujah. Why? Because if you're either moving forward or you're moving backward, you can't stay in one place. Over a, over a period of time, you will discover that sitting in one place, you actually went backward because life would have passed you by. Hallelujah. I'm not talking about when somebody is all, you know what we call gra gra. Or pushful, you know. Because covetousness is a very thin line between having a drive and being covetous. Bible Jesus said one says, Don't think of what you will eat or what you will wear, what you will put on, and all that. Why? See, because your heavenly father knows that you have need of these things. Say, but what should occupy your mind? See, the things of the kingdom. Seek first the kingdom of God. And all these things will be added. You know what complacency is? Not thinking of what you eat or drink and all those things. And neither, neither seeking the kingdom of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. He said, look at the scripture. It says, say, don't be consumed with what you will think or eat or all those things. Because such things the Gentiles do what? They run after, right? But what are we supposed to do as believers? To seek first the kingdom of God. To seek first the, thing of, the things of God. To go for the things of God. So sometimes you have people 
they are not running after what they will eat, what they will drink, and all those things. Neither are they seeking the kingdom of God first. That's complacency. That's what that's that's the way. That's middle ground there. That place where you're neither moving forward or moving backward is what complacency is. There's somebody that I must hear a voice every Sunday. Mercy, right? <laughs> Hallelujah. And look at what the Bible tells us in Zephaniah chapter one. Zephaniah chapter one and verse twelve. Um, I'm reading the New King James. It says, And it shall come to pass at that time that I will search Jerusalem with lambs and punish the men who are settled in complacency. Let me read that again. And it shall come to pass at that time that I will search Jerusalem with lambs and punish the men who settled in complacency. Who say, who say in their heart, the Lord will not do good, nor will he do evil. Hallelujah. The Lord will not do good, nor will he do evil. And look at what it says next. It says, and therefore their good shall become booty, and their house is, and their, and, and their house is a desolation. They shall build houses, but not inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards, but not drink their wine. Why? Because they settled in complacency. They settled in complacency. They said, the Lord, uh, the Lord will not do good, neither will he do evil. They're sitting on the fence. They're neither moving forward or not doing any, anything. The Bible says, without knowing it, they are, they are losing out. They, are, they build houses. And the house becomes a place of desolation. They plant vineyard and they cannot eat. Why? Because of complacency. Complacency. See, every, every organization knows that. Every organization knows that you cannot be in business just focusing on what you do today. If you are only focused on what you do today, you will soon run out of business. Because tomorrow will come and the things of today might become irrelevant. Let's take a look at certain things in our life. You know, some one day I, what was I doing, sir? I think it, I was writing a check, then I said to myself, ah, you know, people who, whose business was, and what I call printing checks or making checks. You know they are suffering little by little now. How many times do you write check in a, in a month? I write mostly one check in a month for my rent. <laughs> because the landlord still requires me to write, uh, you know. That's the new one. The one, the, the checkbook I order, you know. Do you know how long it will stay to finish? They are soon going out of business. So if that company isn't thinking, very soon, because life is always moving. That's why every right thinking organization have their research department, researching and investing in the future. So that when tomorrow comes, they will still stay relevant they will still stay relevant. Today's world, things leave the shores just like this. You can imagine those printing press. I used to print newspaper. Oh my goodness. I used to print magazine. Oh my goodness. You can imagine. When was the last time you bought a newspaper or a magazine? You just open your phone and guess what happened? They are all there. And that's the same way every organization understands. You can't say to for today. Hallelujah. And the worst kind of complacency is spiritual complacency. And 
we arrive there very fast. Hallelujah. I say we get to that spiritual complacency very fast, like this. Boom! You just get there. Why? All of a sudden, you get very familiar with the things of God. Ah, God, you know, it's God. He's, he's God. He's God. So there's no drive again. There are, not, there are no new goals. When you got born again, the first time when you came to Christ, the first time you read the Bible from first page to Genesis to Revelation. If you are like me, after you read it through the first time and the second time, you find it very difficult to read it through again. So I will just be peace and peace. You know, if I want to motivate myself to read more again, I'll buy a brand new Bible. <laughs> I'm telling you the truth, is what I do. <laughs> if I want to motivate myself to look into, i buy a different kind of Bible. Because that one, I've used it, I've used it, I've used it. And the drive for it is what? I get a new app. See my, this is my iPad. I can tell you I have up close to 20 different um, Bible um, apps there. There are some apps I pay $50 for. There are some apps I pay, there's one I paid almost um, 90 or something like that that I pay for. It's not because of anything. Sometimes I just want to motivate myself to read. Sometimes those things I'm paying for, I still see in the other ones that I have. But it's something new. Because see, spiritually we get there like this. Boom, very fast. Very, very fast. And spiritual complacency is very dangerous. Extremely dangerous. Because you take a step back without even realizing it. That you're taking steps backwards. You don't even know. You're still in church. Everything is still good. But there's a complacency. And how do you begin to find out that there's a complacency? Just find out that there's no, there's no drive again to preach to you, to preach to somebody like you used to be, like you used to that first time. There's no drive to, you know, share the word of God like you used to. Pray less, study less. Oh, Sunday, Sunday. Tuesday is out of the window. Thursday is out of the window. Sun Saturday is out of the window. Oh, okay. Sunday is still good. And sometimes we don't realize. There was a time where, oh, oh will there be church on Monday? You're looking forward to it. Or Tuesday or Wednesday. I mean, you, you wanted to be in church or the presence of God every time. And after some time, ah, I was there yesterday now. Pastor, can't I miss church on one Sunday out of 52 Sundays? There was a time when you can never think like that. I mean, you can't miss church. You'd be like, no. No. And gradually, gradually, we find ourselves in a place where we become too relaxed in the things of God. As a church, sometimes we get there and I look again and say, oh no, we have become, we have to drag ourselves out. See, complacency, everyone gets to that point. But you must realize, you must realize that you are becoming a little bit too comfortable. You are becoming too relaxed in the things of God. Then you find a way to wake yourself up again. Say, come on, come on, come on. See, because, see, settling is dangerous. You just don't know it. You know what happened to the apostles after Jesus Christ um, ascended? The Bible tells us that they were having fellowship from house to house, breaking bread, you know, and eating and having fellowship, sharing things in common. They were enjoying fellowship. Sometimes just enjoying one another's company can be complacency. And what happened? Persecution came. Bah! And they all flee. Peter ran. Do you remember where John was running to? You understand? So that fellowship time that they were having, the Bible says, Woe unto him who is at ease in Zion. 
Say, woe unto him. That one that thinks, oh, everything is okay, is at ease in Zion. He's not talking of somewhere else, in Zion. Say, woe unto him. Because why? There's, there, you are inviting a shaking. You're inviting a shaking. Hallelujah. Sometimes you just invite a shaking. Don't wait for heaven to shake you. Please shake yourself. I'm telling you. Don't wait for persecution to come your way. Please shake yourself and begin to say to yourself, wow, I'm beginning a little bit too relaxed here. There's a danger time that we always have to be mindful of. That time where we have enough to eat, enough to drink, and all our bills are paid. You have to watch for that no time in your life. Be very careful of that time in your life. You say, oh, pastor, is that not what you have been praying for? Uh -uh. Is that not what God is supposed to, you know? But the Bible warns us to be very careful of that moment. Why? Say, because it's, you, it's easy to forget the Lord your God. It's easy to forget him. To think that it's your power, it is you that has brought you there. It's easy for you to now begin to just want to, ah, is this me? Oh my goodness. Let me relax and enjoy it. Now. There must always be a new vision. Spiritually, you must always know what it is to set new goals for you. Set new things for you. In your service to God, whatever you do for God, your work with God. Always find a way to find it into flame. Always find a way. Find a way. Because sometimes it's going to look as if the fire is burning out. Hallelujah. In Amos in chapter 1, that scripture I read, it said, Whoa! I'm reading the Amplified. Amos 6 1. Whoa! Judgment is coming to those who are at ease and carefree in Zion, Judah. And to those on the mountain of Samaria who feel secure. The distinguished men of the foremost of nations to whom the house of Israel come. Say those ones, say woe unto him. Judgment comes easily. Why? Because of how relaxed they are. How relaxed they are. Glory be to God. So don't be like that. But when you, when you find yourself in that situation, whether it's an, as an organization, as a family, as, as an individual, stir it up again. Hallelujah. It's time to pray again. It's time to worship again. It's time to love the things of God again. Hey, okay, I can't remember the last time we attended Bible study. It's time to start attending Bible study again. It's time to be in prayer meetings again. It is time. You know, I said to us um, some time back, I said, in a year, in a year, in a year, find time. Hmm? Use some of your PTO, what is it called now, right? Take some of it. Make sure you go for a Christian retreat, a camp meeting, one of those things. Sit for three, four days. Sometimes you go from Thursday, Friday. Sit in the presence of God hmm? and listen. Just take that time and let God minister to you, your spouse, your children. Stay under that environment. I tell you, you don't know what good you're doing to your household by doing that. At least, how many do we have? Most of you have like 20, 30, 40 in a, in a year. Take out three, four. Pay time, your pay, please, you know. Take it. So, camp meeting is coming. Where is Pastor Sargazon, Pastor Kaede, or one of those ones, you know. Not just the one we do in house. Take three, four days out. And go and sit. 
in a calm meeting and be refreshed. If me as a pastor love to do that, because I notice that uh, every other place I go to, I'm one to preach or one or the other. At least when I go there, I sit down. And you will not see me sitting in front though. I sit with my family, my children, me and my wife. Sit. It's a family time for us. All of us, let's sit down and hear the word of God. They are sleeping, you wake them. Give them chewing gum, give them different things. They know all our meetings now. <laughs> Said Pastor Pella. When they say it's 12 o'clock, so we will close. That's where he will just be. <laughs> it's just starting. <laughs> <laughs> and they can recount all the different episodes of how they have gone to a meeting and the meeting, this is 10, 11, and they are thinking, okay, the meeting will soon close and it's going to 12, and after 12, and they are looking at us and we are looking at them, shaking them. Don't worry. It's only one weekend or two weekends we do that in a year. See, it's a training also that you are passing down to the next generation. It will do something in their life that you, you might not even know about. Someday, sometime, the things, the benefits of those meetings in their life, when it's playing out, you won't even be there. I'm telling you, you won't even be there. Take out time. Take out time. Refresh again. Hallelujah. Every organization must know to do that. See, when there is no vision, the Bible tells us that the people perish. There's a way it puts it, I think, in New, Je New um, King James, let me look for it. He said the people cast restraint. Hallelujah. Let me see now. Where is that in Proverbs? No, 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 no. Where is that scripture again? Ah. Who knows? Look for me. It's Proverbs 18, right? 29, yeah. So, so where there is no vision, the people, okay, this is American um, standard uh, version. So where there is no vision, the people cast off restraint. In other words, they behave anyhow. They do things anyhow. They cast off, you know. But when there is a vision, there's a common pool for everyone. You know, vision is interesting. It helps to organize everyone and give them, you know, a direction where to employ all your resources, your energy and everything. That's where we're heading. Hallelujah. And accomplishing a goal, there's a joy and satisfaction that it brings to you. It keeps you alive. Hallelujah. See, understand this. See, this is how God intends for our spirit, soul, and body to keep, you know, fun, be, you know, for it to remain functional. If there is no vision, if there is no drive, there's a part of you that will slip into lethargy, you know, just, and you don't know it. There's really nothing you're trying to accomplish. There's really nothing you're trying to do. There's really nothing that is making you wake up and go. An age is not a limitation. The Bible tells us in Psalm 92, it says, at old age you shall still do what? Bring forth fruit. Now, it's not saying at old age you still be slaving and working like um, you were doing at the other age. No, 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 no. That's not what he's talking about. But your, you will still be productive means that you will still have a vision. You will still have something, reason to get up and go in life. You still have a reason. Because when you get to a place, a point in your life, when you say, there is nothing again, that's a very risky place. In case you have forgotten, ask the rich fool. He said to himself, ah, look at me. I have gotten to there. I am there now. Let me just do what? Sit down, relax, eat, enjoy my life. And the Bible tells us, God said, thou fool, today, today. You have no relevance again in the world. You, are, you have no relevance again. No. Why? Because for every time, you have to understand that there's, there's always something new to do. It's not about you 
you know, um, getting richer, increasing um, in terms of material things. But understand that there is a purpose for your life that is beyond making money. It's beyond meeting your needs. Beyond. There are lives that God has designed for you to touch. There are people. The Bible says we are created in Christ Jesus for good works that he has already ordained for us to walk in. There are good works that God has ordained for you. Make life better. Make people better. Hallelujah. Touch lives. Depopulate the kingdom of darkness. Put a smile in somebody's face. Bring joy to people. Hallelujah. There's a purpose. So when you lose that fire, when you lose that drive, then you just begin to live anyhow. So when you see somebody that does not have a vision, like I said, anything is good enough, anywhere is good enough. Hallelujah. You know, as a church, you can't, you, are, you can't afford not to have a vision. Now, you know, there's whole energy, our building, our building, our building, we're praying, we're doing that. You know we'll soon move into our building, right? If there's nothing else, <laughs> if you don't have anything else, then everybody will just be like, but we must understand that there's the heavenly vision. Hallelujah. So we keep designing, we keep coming up with new ways to do ministry. Hallelujah. I see there's nothing new. It's still to reach souls. It's still to reach people. That's all. It's all. Every, everything about ministry, that's what it's all about. And if we ever stop doing that, if we ever cease from coming up, new ways, means of doing ministry, of our ministries, reaching souls, reaching people out there, then understand that we're beginning to lose the fire. And that far, far be it from us in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Look at this scripture. So you understand when the Bible talks about, you know, um, being that the danger of being complacent, the danger especially spiritually, is because of the, you know, how far it could cause somebody to fall. So the Bible tells us in um, Revelations, hallelujah, Revelations and chapter 3, I read from verse 14. I'm reading the King James Version. It says, And unto the angel of the church, I'm reading from verse 14, yeah. And unto the angel of the church of Laodicea, write, This thing saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold, nor hot. I would that thou wert cold or hot. So when, so then, because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, say, I will spew thee out of my mouth, because thou sayest, look at this, look at the next slide, there. look at what it's referring to. For because thou sayest, I am rich, and increased with goods, and have need of nothing. <laughs> and have need. Say, and thou knowest not that thou art wretched, miserable, poor, and blind, and naked. Come back again. So God said to them, I was writing to the church, and that's why I talk about the danger of spiritual you know, complacency. The danger of it. Say, thou say, you know, say, thou, thou art neither hot nor cold. And because of that, he said, I will spew you out of my mouth. The fire is gone. That drive is no more. That push is no more. Hallelujah. There is no push to pray. There is no push to study. There is no push to, you know, to, to, to do something new with the Spirit of God. There is no, you know, there, there's no fanning into flame. But they are in church because it was writing to the church in Laodicea. It wasn't writing to people who are not in church. He said, you have become neither.
and they are hot, nor cold will become so lukewarm. Hallelujah. You know, one of the things I always be grateful for, a senior pastor, you know, he will tell you, anything that you do, that you don't put thought and measure into, I say, it's, it's not an acceptable service to God. And how many of us know that after you have done something for, for five years plus, you can close your eyes and just make it happen? <laughs> you, you, don't, you don't need to think, honestly. I mean, I, didn't, I don't have to think to plan program. I'm telling you, I didn't have to. I don't, I don't even have to write, you know, initially I would do the proposal, different things. After some time, I don't even do it again. You know why? Because I got so used to it. And he will say, Peter, you didn't put thought and measure to this thing. You just, the same thing you have been doing before is what you still want us to do. In my mind, I'm thinking, what is the new thing that we want to do now? We have done this thing before and it's been very successful. Why am I bothering myself again? But you always say, even if you want the same program you've had before, look, it's like camp meeting is always camp meeting. The problem of camp meeting is the problem of camp meeting. I've known it like the back of my palm. Gospel festival is gospel festival. Media convention is media convention. You know how many proposals of those things I have in my drawer? I had so many. I can just pick one and just duplicate it and send it out and we'll have the program. But he will always say, you didn't put thought and measure. There is no planning involved in this thing. And that's how people can become very complacent. You just roll it again, roll it again. So there is no thought there's no measure being put into these things again. And there's a danger of these things in the heart of, heart of God. See, so now you're neither hot nor cold. There's complacency. And we get there very fast with God. You might be doing the same thing in the house of God, but always make sure that you put planning into it. You and when I say planning, it means think the day through. Think that day through. Think that service through. Think it through. Think of how it can be better. Think of how things can change or be better than what it is today. And you will see the Spirit of God giving you the wisdom and the grace to make it happen. I'm telling you. And I've seen it several times. I've seen it. Put thoughts into the things you want to do with God, you'll be surprised at how your life will play out. And before you know what is happening, it will translate into your personal life. I'm telling you, translate into your personal life. That when you begin to work with God and have success in the things of ministry, you very, very, very soon you begin to work with God and have success in the area of your personal life. The Bible talks about those who have purchased for themselves great boldness using the things of God. See, they purchased for themselves great boldness, not just for ministry, but for life. So he was talking to them. He said, now you have become neither hot nor cold. There is complacency. There is complacency. He said, I will spray you out of my mouth because any job, anything for God that thought planning is not put into it, don't think, see, I'm sure you heard what a senior pastor preached at that time. God is not obligated in receiving anything that you give to him. You can give him what you want to give him. That's you. But he's not obligated in receiving it. Hallelujah. He knows when you put thought and measure to what you're giving to him, to what you're doing in his house. Hallelujah. And so he moved forward. He says, and why are they like this? See, it's not like these people were broke or all those things. He said, because thou said, I am rich. And I'm increased with good. Of goods. I have need of nothing. I have, that means everything is blessed. I have enough to eat. I have enough to drink. My bills are paid. You know, I got no mortgage. I got no car note. I have none of those things. 
that people have. Everything about me, I've paid cash, and I'm living a good life. I'm living an enjoyment life. And look at what the Lord said about them. Say, wow, you don't even know that you are wretched, and you are miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. And he says, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in fire, that thou mayest be rich, there's true riches, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that thy shame, and the shame of thy nakedness, do not appear. And anoint thy eyes with eye cells, that thou mayest see. Hallelujah. Then he says, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Then he says, be zealous, therefore, and repent. And that's what was missing. No zeal again. No zeal again. He didn't just tell them to repent. He said, be zealous. Be passionate. Have a drive. Bring energy. Hallelujah. Bring the energy. When you're doing things for me, when you're when it's about to say, bring it up. Don't just do it anyhow. Don't just offer it anyhow. Hallelujah. And my normal saying will be, if you can't give it your best or you are not in position to do it, then don't do it at all. Just leave it. Hallelujah. Because spiritual idleness, it opens the door for Satan. Satan creeps in. In a, in a Nigerian language, there's a proverb. An idle man is what? Amen. Amen. It's devil's workshop. That's where devil produces all his tools. An idle man. Idleness. Give room. That's where devil begins to craft things. Begin to work things. Begin to sell some ideas. Hallelujah. Idle man. Just think about it. Think of, you remember King Solomon? Bible tells us he was the wisest man that lived a right. Solomon himself said this. He said, I have excelled in wisdom so much that I decided to do what? Try foolishness. Idleness. Telling you. Decided to try foolishness. Would that not be a portion? Would that not be a portion? He said, you're neither hot nor cold. I will spew you out of my mouth. I will spew you out. See, Never find yourself, whether it's business, life, don't be complacent. There are new grounds to be conquered. If you're a Christian, see, for there are new victories to be won by us. Hallelujah. There are new things that God wants to do through us. Don't relax. Don't feel too satisfied spiritually. Don't feel too contented with things. Don't, you know. So it's only when there is a problem that you want to run. It's only when there is fire on the mountain. No, 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 no. Don't wait for it. Be that person. Be that person. Have the fire. Have the push. Glory be to God. Stay in prayer. Talk to God. Set spiritual goals. Increase your prayer life. Increase your study life. Do more than you're doing. Hallelujah. Say, I'm doing so well. Say, do even more. Do even the more. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. That's what Apostle Paul's teaching is all about. Say, I don't count myself. I don't see myself as one that has attained or one that is perfect. Say, but there's something that I keep doing. I keep Pressing forward. I keep reaching for more. I keep wanting more. Hallelujah. For God. It's not in the form of covetousness. You know, some people get money, the more they get, the more they want. No, 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 no. Hallelujah. I'm not settling for what I have today because there is more in God. I'm not settling for where I am today. I'm not settling for who I am. No. There's more in Christ. Hallelujah. And I'm constantly looking for more. I'm constantly working for more. I'm constantly pushing for more. Because when you settle, there's no push again. You can't get better. There's stagnation. Hallelujah. And the worst mindset is when it's, you know, one settles in their head. 
and do not push again. Hallelujah. Doesn't matter how good you are doing, you can do better. Doesn't matter how great it seems, there's always room. Until that day comes that you are ready, like Paul says, to be absent from this body and be present with the Lord. Then you can say like Paul, I have fought a good fight. I have run the, I've, I've finished my course. I have run the race. Hallelujah. I'm done. I am done. Now I can go. Now I can leave. Until that time, continue to push for more. Continue to reach for more. Want more from God. Hallelujah. David said, as the deer panted for the water, so my soul longed for God. There must be that constant seeking, wanting more of God. The more you have of God, the more you want of him. Glory be to God. Your drive is not so that you are, you know, some people's drive is that say, let me just make it, then I can relax and settle there. No. Hallelujah. That's the reason why you can have a church that just grew. You hear they were like 10,000, 20,000, and they just said, okay, we are in, we're okay, we're okay. And when mission and ministry stop, you know what happens? It begins to dissipate. Before you know what is happening, it becomes just a big building. They do not, don't have any people there. That's because you should never stop. It doesn't matter how much you have achieved, how much you have accomplished in life, there's always room for more. And that's how, see, your spirit, soul, and body gets to continue to function. It doesn't matter how old you are. It's God's design. That's God's plan. You know, there are certain things that happen to a majority of our, you know, for those parents that retired from ministry, from work, all those kind of things. They were used to working. When they retire, you know, most of them don't last five, ten years because they retire from life. There's a danger of retiring from life. It's a high danger. So I always say to people retiring, I say, you are retiring from work, you are not retiring from life. Make sure you are engaged, make sure you are involved, make sure you are still doing things. I always tell people, if my dad was still working, I don't think he would have passed on when he did. But you know, all of a sudden you retire from work and there's nothing again. Just relax at home. Relax, relax, relax. And before you know what is happening, certain body pain, certain this one, that one, that one. All the years he was going to work, he didn't hear of those things. He was just retired for five years. Five years. Five years. Strongly, and I'll say, even my mom will say, if my dad was still working, I'm sure he would, he would still be alive. So you must understand. See, God designed it. Complacency. Getting to a point where you think there's nothing again makes people to expire very fast. Don't. Look for something else to do. Hallelujah. You're done with this, turn to something else. Have a new drive. Have a new vision. Have something to accomplish. Have something you're working for. Have a goal, something you want to do. Have it. It will keep you what? Going, moving, doing. It's not so that you have more money. No, 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 no. This is not about money. Hallelujah. My aunt in um, Atlantis will say, oh, no, I'm retired from work, but I still work one day in a week. Then you know it's not the money that she needs. <laughs> but she still works one day in a week. She goes to work. So one day in a week, I still go. I just go there to, you know, exhale, do something. That's what I'm talking about. Spiritual is dangerous. When you think you've achieved everything and there's no room for more. Don't be there. Fight the danger of complacency. No matter how good today is, it can be better. Don't let yesterday hold you back. Don't let past success or past failure make you to be complacent today. No. Hallelujah. You know, there is, there's a reason why many people don't try again. It's because they tried yesterday and they didn't succeed. 
and they decided that, okay, I'm done. Now, it doesn't matter. And, you know, we have so many people in Facebook and face, face novel and face everything they call it, face every time, face, face time, face. They, are, they all become professors of everything. If you don't allow the word of God to teach you, the world will teach you. I'm telling you. The scripture, you don't allow the Bible to teach you, social media will teach you. Hallelujah. And you don't know from whence people are speaking. Oh, all men are useless. You don't know that it's because the, of their own experience. That's why they are speaking. They are just speaking their own experience. When I see such thing, I said, um, not me and my children. Or my son, no. So all men, all women are this. Then why are they speaking like that? It's because of their past experience. Don't join such people. Don't join such people. Church people are brainwashed. Don't join such people. Hallelujah. They've gotten to a place where they don't hope for a change again. They've gotten to a place where they don't hope for a change. They don't want, you know, they are set in their ways. Some men have refused to marry because they believe that all women are what they think, you know, in their mind. And some women have refused to marry because of what they think all men are. And maybe just because of one experience that they have refused to move past in their life and allow that to color their entire. And they have become very complacent. I pray God to break such things. I pray God breaks such things from them. This is not the mind of God. It doesn't matter how many times you tried something. If it didn't work out, talk to God. Don't settle. Do not settle. Hallelujah. Don't settle for it. Don't settle for it. Keep declaring. Keep believing. Keep speaking. I can't begin to tell you how many frustrations, you know, have, you know, can supposed to have come on me, especially me with our church building. I'm telling you the truth. It's not easy. But you know why we are still able to hold up? What do I normally say when all those things have happened? I say, God is helping us. It is well. God will make a way out. <laughs> I can't tell that many, in quote, bad news has come over the last three, four years. Can't, can't, I mean, uncountable. But you know what? I, I keep holding on hope. I keep holding on hope. You know, I bring again to my to remembrance what happened in the town hall when we are applying for the change of use? I remind myself, I saw the hand of God. I saw God walk. I saw God silence the people in the township. It's not like God drove them away and made them fall so that they couldn't attend. No, no. You know, I keep telling you that God does not work that way. They were all present, all seated. They were all there. They came with their plot and their plan and everything. But you know what God did? Seal their mouth. And they asked them, anybody has anything to say? They looked at each other. Anyone has anything to say? They looked at each other. Everybody was looking. Nobody said anything. Okay, let's take the vote. And they took the vote. And we won. And when they went outside, so that you will know, that something happened in that hall. They were looking at each other when they went outside. Like, uh-uh. What happened? <laughs> they looked at each other. What happened? See, when I remember that, that testimony and how God works salvation and deliverance well, I said to myself, this building is a matter of time. You will be completed. <laughs> Perfect, beautiful, the plan and the will of God will be done. Hallelujah. I tell you, I, I recount the testimony of God concerning that building. I say to myself, all is well. All is well. Never lose hope. Don't let the cause of what has happened to people. And you know, sometimes, let me, let me tell you, let me go further again. I know of churches that bought properties that for change of use 
for a long time. But some of them could not even overturn it. I attended one. I'm not going to mention the church because they're on camera. It took them almost 10 years to enter their building because they were fighting the township. So I've seen all those things. Don't you think it's enough to create fear in me because of what I've seen and what I know? But I refuse. I refuse. I spoke with a pastor that said the first contractor collected 100,000 plus, got halfway, and we had to tear it down and start again before this new contractor that I sent me to him to go and, you know, was using him as a reference, you know, and said, see, this, we built that church, one of the Spanish guys I wanted to use. Say, go see that church. So I went and looked at the church, good work. So I was talking with the pastor, said, you won't believe what happened to us. The first contractor, we spent over 100,000 plus, and it was all erased and all those kind of things. Now, when that happened to us, what do you think I should be thinking? This devil. This devil. He said all, all that so that you understand. Complacency is a choice. Complacency is a choice. You can decide. Even though everything seems to be pointing in that direction, you can refuse to say, no, my story is different. My situation is different. You wake up with a new zeal and with a new drive and you keep pushing forward. As long as you don't quit, as long as you don't give up, know that there is a grace to succeed. There is grace. Hallelujah. So it doesn't matter in which area. Sometimes it could be in your health. You've tried this, you've done this, and all those kind of things. This pain will not go away. This thing will not go away. Don't give up. Keep declaring. Keep speaking. I'm the healed of the Lord. I'm healed. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I'm healed. You've tried different businesses and all seems not to be working. Keep declaring. I'm a successful businessman. It is working for me. It is working for me. Complacency say don't try again. Stay in your comfort zone. Keep doing what is you, you know to do. And don't launch out. Don't step out. I pray that will not be a portion in Jesus' name. Doesn't matter what the enemy throws at you. Remember, there is a grace. It's a new day. Hallelujah. You wake up in the morning, declare, it's a new day, it's a new week, it's a new month. God is fulfilling his good pleasure in my life. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I pray the grace and the strength to keep pushing forward, keep making progress in life, keep excelling in what you do in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord bless you.